the fact that you're against us women in ministry, that's my introduction. Oh, you know, we talked about it last time. You're not in ministry. You can't be in ministry. If you're pretending that you are in ministry, then you're preaching a demonic gospel. Women are not to be in ministry, period. Not only can I source this from the Protestant perspective, but I would like to ask you first and foremost if you know anything about church history. I want to start with that. Before we get into trying to throw Bible verses back and forth, can we just start with church history? Do you know anything about church history? Yes and no. I guess what specifics? Are you asking if in the early church <coughs> was there any apostles that were female? Because you asked. No, me I'm time. asking things like, do you know anything about the Great Schism or the Second Schism or any of the councils, which the ecumenical councils, which were brought together? Do you know anything about any of that? No, I just know Bible and Bible right. says that woman. So here, so here would be my question to you: Why do you follow the Bible if you don't know anything about its history? Because I believe in Jesus, and Jesus is the Word, and the Word is God, and I just follow. And I'm learning. I'm studying the Bible. I haven't read the entire Bible from front to back, but what I have read from it, it does allow women to be in ministry. No, it doesn't. So hang on. Let's back up a little bit. What if I told you that throughout the entire history of the church, women were not allowed to be clergy ever until uh, about uh, a few hundred years ago? Would that weigh in? I'm not even saying that this is true. I'm just saying, let, let's just say that it were true. Would that hold any weight whatsoever in your mind as to whether or not women should have ministries? I would be like, okay, well, in the Bible, does it say that? I would just go back to Bible. I feel like that's just... Okay. Buddy, here's the thing. How do you know the Bible is true? Is it just a feeling? It's proven it's true. Even no. like the things that have happened, they could prove that Jesus... Well, hang on. Lived. Let her answer. Let her answer. Well, yeah. No, so it's not just a feeling. Although there are experiences where you could quote-unquote say that you could feel the Holy Spirit, whatever. But as far as the Bible goes, yeah, it's been proven and it's continuously... Okay, so let's start with this. What's your best proof that Jesus Christ existed? That over 500 people saw him after he rose again. No mass hallucinations. There is no people were drugged up. It's not a matter of fact if Jesus existed or not. The only argument is if he is the true God. Can look at Jesus and know that he was real and he existed. Okay, and Jesus was a conductor of miracles, correct? Yeah. Okay, so as a conductor of miracles, these were also witnessed, right? Yeah. And who sourced those miracles? Disciples. Men. And who else? People. And then, yeah, yeah there's other, even people that weren't his disciples. Yeah. Okay. If you look at so history then, books from that okay, time. Okay, hang on, hang on, okay. hang on. I'm not trying to trip you up. I'm just trying to yeah, kind of right. walk you through. Because here's what I've noticed. What I've noticed is, is that when I talk to Protestants, if I ask them kind of basic questions about church history, they can't really answer any of them. And I think that that's kind of an important detail and they just kind of seem to pay it lip service. So for instance, the idea, are you a Trinitarian? Yes. Okay, when did that idea get introduced into Christianity, do you know? In the beginning was the word, also when Lake- now, When did it get introduced though? When did it get introduced? Do you know when the idea itself got introduced? Because the church was fighting about, right? There was Unitarians, yeah, essentially, fighting. under a guy named Arius. They were called Arians. And they had taken over the entire church. Mm -hmm. They had taken over 90% of it until they had a council, which they finally were able to settle this in. And you just like, you don't know any of that, right? No, but I know that in the Bible. Yeah, this is why no, the body no, no. of the church is no, so no, important. Because the body of the, the church is the conductor of the history of the church. They are able to collect this, and they're able to utilize both tradition and church history in order to convey to you the proper message. This original church, the reason you're a Trinitarian is because their council told you that you are to be a Trinitarian as a Christian. That's what they, the original church, said to you to do. You know what they also told you you can't be? A clergyman. That's right, you can't be clergy. So how can we take one part of what they say and you would accept it as being true. But then the other parts that you don't like, you reject only because you just don't like them. I have three 
questions slash points that I have for you. Number one, my first question is this. Are you saying that females in general can't be used by God? Because then my no. question there... Okay, that's course, what I was going to not. say. We have female... There's female saints. No, I well, never I was going to say... In, claim. That, that yeah. claim is ridiculous, but hang on. There's a difference between that and being clergy. Okay. Do you understand yeah, the we're distinction? We're talking there? about that. So we're then, my second ministry. question: What is your interpretation of the significance of the Book of Esther, of uh, the Book of Ruth, and stuff like that, who are very significant women in our faith? But if you don't discount the fact and that they use no, but this was my second. That's what no, I was wait, asking. Wait, 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 hang on. Yeah. No. No, but that's what I said. No. My question was, do you think that the Lord can use women? That was my very specific question. Yeah. It wasn't about and clergy. He does, he it wasn't about ministry. That. that was just my question to clarify, just so I could clarify understand what? more. We're talking about whether or not women can be clergy. My second question is, you said that the church's history is a mix of tradi tradition. My question for you is, didn't Jesus come back because he was basically wanting to break that because the Pharisees was no, just tradition? No, Jesus came to give us a church. He said so himself. He came to give us his church. And but wasn't that exactly the, the issue did. with the dogmaticness of the Pharisees and that he, they were he, all tradition? Oh, he told his disciples to take his church to all four corners of the world, which is exactly what they did. Can you name the female clergy member? Can you name the female that went to any four corners of this earth in order to deliver his message to the world? Who was it? What was I'm, her name? I was going to say, I think in the book of Acts, and you could look this up and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm pretty sure in the book of Acts it actually does reference women who became believers and then went out and spoke. So are you specifically yeah, talking about that? I'm just trying to understand. And then my third question for you is you were saying that when did the Trinity come into faith? I'm just genuinely curious. Wouldn't that have been on the day of Pentecost when... Women should keep silent in churches for they are not permitted to speak. It hmm. should also be in submission, as the law also says. They desire to learn anything, let them ask their own husbands at home, for it's improper for a woman to speak in church. Yes, the con. What does that mean? So what they're talking about, I actually just learned this, that the woman should not be interrupting in the middle of sermon, like, hey, husband, what did the pastor mean? Like, trying to learn from him in the middle and wait till you get home. That's both of them sitting in the church and as a husband and wife taking in whoa, the whoa. sermon. What church? Well, at that time, like that's... Well, wait, wait a second. What church? What is the church? The people. The church is we the are, people. Like us. The church is the people. So if a church is just people, if it's just a... If we're all just the assembly of the church, then this means any time that you are being ministered to by any man, you should be quiet, right? Because everywhere you are, by your logic, would be the church. No. Interesting. Okay, well then go ahead and, and I'm waiting for the counter argument because no isn't one. Just saying no is not a okay. counter argument. Just being so like, no, if, I don't think if so. We had, if we had the Apostle Paul and I was with my husband and the Apostle Paul is talking, right, then him and, and my husband and I were together. I'm not going to be interrupting my husband saying, what did he mean when he said this? It's like that, that is saying you go and wait until you're home and get that answer. Don't interrupt in church. Or interrupt. Yeah, what is church? church? When you're being what taught is, by. Yeah, being taught where? By who? Okay, but that's by someone that's in the church. But that's not saying that the someone woman. Someone who's in the church. Well, you but keep on saying you were in a church, can't. but this building can't, isn't the church, right? So what is the church? The church is wherever you bring the word. And, and I think going so back then to where. you are at all times, you're supposed to be quiet and not correct men, right? Not supposed to correct men and. You are supposed to ask. So you're taking it out of context. What, what is happening I think you're in that, taking in it that out of scripture? Context. They're not just out in dinner. They're not just out watching a movie. They're not at the mall. They're in a church setting where they're being what is taught the, the, word of, the word of God. What is that setting? To require a building? It doesn't require a building. It doesn't it's not require a building. Got it. So there. wait, so what does it require? What is a church setting then? What are the requirements to be at church? There's like no building required. What is the requirement to be a church? What is it? I feel like it'd be a, a way of life. A church is a body of people, too. Ah, I yes, like, a church is a body of people. You said Jesus told all his disciples, and he told people to go out to the four ends of the earth and tell people about it. So if I'm a woman and the Bible says that, I'm going to do that. I'm not going to be like, no, I can't do that because... It says in the Bible, he spoke to his disciples. It talks about us, no matter who you are, to go and do that. Yeah, and then when Jesus would heal or perform miracles, he would also tell them, 
you've been healed, now go, now go. Go tell them, go tell them about the miracles, tell them that I have healed you. So that's what we're talking about is going to share the word of God, going to share our testimonies. I'm not sure exactly what your title or your position is. What is your position? I think he was talking about even my other question. So if we're, are we being nuanced and saying specifically a clergy? Because I'm thinking of the woman at the well. I'm sorry. (laughs) Timothy 212. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. She must be quiet. Moving on from there, I agree with that. A it says woman over is not a man. to correct, we but ag- must ask her husband, right? We yeah. agree with that. In the Bible, it talks about women submitting to her husband. So if I'm no, a woman uh, in a relationship teach. and a I'm trying to overrule... To, a woman's not permitted to teach. Over a man. What does it mean? Hmm. we got to finish well, the sentence. Over a man. I do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man. Over Period. A man. So, so how can you be a minister? You can't assume authority over men. I don't know about you guys, but when I'm saying ministry, holding Bible study, sharing testimonies, going out there and serving, creating ministries for seniors, whatever it is to go out and and help people, outreaches. But if you bring up our last conversation from a month ago, I had the same stance. I'm going to give you a counter argument. Here's my counter argument. So you're out there giving your little ministry, your little Bible study, right? (laughs) And a man comes over and he says, no, you're full of shit. That's not what that means. You're wrong. Falsely. Are you allowed to correct him? Would he be cussing at me like that? That's not fruit of the spirit. Yeah, he would be cussing at you like that. He's like, you're no. fucking wrong. Then no, you're totally because, well, that's, wrong about that's everything. That's not fruit of the spirit, and that's not... Well, I, wait a second. Does it say... Them. I'm sorry. Does it say that he has to come over and we, be nice and kiss your ass? We Is also got to be aware of sheep in wolf's clothing. I do not permit a woman to teach or assume authority over a man. If a man comes over and corrects your teaching, are you an allowed to assume man? authority that over him? That doesn't mean an atheist man. You're not answering my question. I am, but you're not liking my answer. I, I'm going to ask it again. This time, answer the actual question I ask you. Mm -hmm. Are you allowed to assume authority over a man ever? No. Are you allowed to teach a man? No. So if he comes over and corrects you, how could you say you're wrong? If he's an atheist, him, because Mm -hmm. why would I pay attention to an atheist? If he's a Christian, Christian. then yeah, that's different. If he's a Christian, you're never going to correct him? No. I'm saying I would submit to him. I wouldn't ignore him if he was a Christian man. If that is true... Then be quiet the rest of this podcast Shut and up, never Andrew. correct another thing I say about <laughs> theology ever. Now, this is just holding you to your own stance, right? Everything you say about theology is wrong, and you, by your own stance, cannot correct me without teaching me. You're not allowed to do that, again, by your own stance. So you can never say a word about my theology being wrong again ever, right? Okay, Brian, next topic. There's a, actually, no, I want to jump in on this. <laughs> sure, I'd like I, an okay. answer to the question. Let, let her cook, let her so, cook. I think we're getting so off the topic, like you said, clergy, right? I don't need a title to go and speak the word. And not only that, if a, like you said, if a man comes to me and he's speaking, saying that's false and everything, my word comes from the man, like from Jesus, from God. So all I can do is give him the word. It's not my job to sit there and convince him. It's to give him the word. It's not to try to convince him. Yeah, we could try to tell people, convince him of the word. I don't have to sit there and do that. The word will convict him himself. And it talks about the Bible. Don't throw pearls at pigs. If they're not receiving it, okay, cool beans. I did my part. I did what Jesus told me to do, which was spread the word. I don't need a title. I don't need to be like, I'm a pastor. I'm evangelist. As long as I could go in and speak the word, that's all I care about. When I go and speak places, my name's Alyssa. I'm 23. There ain't nothing special about me. I'm just passionately pursuing the Lord and I'm going to share the word that came from him. It's not of my own. A woman at the well. That's So that's, I that's think that's where okay. we're getting to it. Let's like see. you're so stuck on clergy. So, like okay. I don't need I listened, that title. I listened very patiently to everything that you had to say, correct? Yes. Okay, great. Now, do you mind if I cross-examine some of these views? Go ahead. Okay, great. So let's say that you're giving your testimony, which is definitely not ministry, right? Because you don't care about titles and stuff. It's definitely not ministry. And a man comes in who's a Christian, and he says, yeah, no, that's wrong. And you disagree with him. Mm-hmm. Are you going to try to correct him? No, it's not my job to correct him. So it's not your that. job to correct him. What happens if he says, okay, then be silent while I teach the rest of the crowd? Will you allow that? Wait, so is he a person listening to my testimony, or he's yeah. the one running it? If yeah. he's listening... He, he stands up and he goes, everything this chick is saying is wrong. I'm going to go ahead and teach something totally different than what she's teaching. Are you going to allow that? 
I mean, if he's just some random at a church just standing up and saying, oh, I'm going to go up there and teach, I'm pretty sure not just me and a couple people are not going to let him go up there. He's objecting. I mean, I'm sharing my perspective and my story of I know the truth of what happened to me. <coughs> I don't need mm-hmm. his approval of saying, oh, that's false or that's true. Yeah, I'm but are you going to be backing that up with scripture? Say your testimony is you're going to back up with scripture. Back up with scripture that he transformed my mind, he transformed mm-hmm. my heart. Sure. Okay, so how do we know for sure that whatever you're saying according to the gospel is true? How do we know? By my actions, my actions How do we know if it's true? Well, we would know by appealing again to the gospel itself, right? Mm -hmm. Okay, and the gospel itself says that do not permit a woman to teach or to assume authority over a man, right? Okay, I'm I'm, a man of God. Uh, Does it say that or does it not say that? man of God. A man of God. It talks about a woman uh-huh. submitting to her husband, but it also talks about a husband submitting and serving his wife. When it comes to mutual submission, I'm happy to get into that next because what is called mutual submission and what you claim is mutual submission are two very, very, very different things. So when it comes to mutual submission, man is still the head, the head, and yeah. is denoted as being the head. When it says mutual submission, we're talking about submission to God, 